It started off with cute little two pieces, then it went to tracksuits, then it went to mix matching, then it went to looking a hot mess sometimes. Like, oh, you look nice today. And in my head, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. We would get into situations where maybe my husband would be like, I'm sorry. And I would be like, and the rest of the sentence is. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Bethel. For those of you who are new here, welcome to my channel. And for those of you who are subscribers, welcome back to another video. Before we get into this video, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and that you hit the notification bell so that you do not miss any of my upcoming uploads. So, one of the videos that you guys loved the most on my channel since I've been on YouTube is when I did the 10 things that I learned in my first year of marriage. Now, we skipped it, we didn't do one for year two, but I've just hit my three year anniversary. So I thought I would do another version of that. So I am now doing the 10 things that I have learned in my three years of marriage. So stay tuned. So, first thing that I have learned in my three years of marriage is that you guys will both change. You will not stay the same. I am not the same person that I was when I got married. My husband is not the same person that he was when he got married. I know most times we always say that, oh, if the person has got so-and-so traits, you know, beware, they won't change after marriage. So I'm not necessarily talking about things like that, but just generally speaking, you, you evolve as a person. I was 25 when I got married. I'm now 28 going on 29. You get older, things change. It could be something as small as Maybe like your taste in food. Like when I got married, I hated mushrooms. Now I want mushrooms in everything. So imagine now my husband hasn't paid attention to that. And so now he orders me something and he makes sure that he removes all the mushrooms. I know it sounds really trivial, so to speak, but it's the little things. It's the figuring out um, what your partner now likes or if your partner's hobbies have changed or interests, or if you notice that maybe my husband is now into a certain something, then I kind of pay attention to that. So I think it's been really interesting just to kind of see, even within this short space of three years, just how much we've grown as individuals and also as a unit together. So that's definitely the first thing that I have learned in these three years of marriage. The next thing is that timelines will change. So you have to be nimble. I am granted a little bit of a control freak. Um, more so when it comes to just like, I like being able to like plan things out. Have like a five year plan, a one year plan, know what I want to achieve in the year, know what I want to achieve in five years, have goals, etc. However, one thing that this kind of period since we've been married has taught me is that things will not go the way you think they will, for the good and for the bad. So to give you an example, I am now self-employed. That for me is an amazing new thing that has happened that I didn't think was gonna happen in the first five years of my marriage. I also thought by now I would have done way more traveling than I would have done. COVID came to shut those plans down. So we definitely lost a year of our marriage in terms of like the plans that we had to go and like travel and have various different holidays. So I think it's good to have plans. It's good to have goals. It's good to have ambitions and things that you wanna achieve and things that you put down on paper, but it's constantly kind of revisiting those goals and saying, okay, cool. Things have changed or finances have changed or COVID has hit, or maybe you're in a particular place in your career or he's in a particular place in your career and kind of be nimble and be okay to just kind of roll with the punch and know that everything will work out in God's timing. It doesn't have to be the exact way that you guys had seen it, seen it take place. So you have to be nimble because things will not always go the way in which you plan them to, and that's okay. So this next one, I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna be transparent and put it out there. I've heard the phrase, Women, don't let yourself go. And the same goes for men. Let me not do double standards. Don't let yourself go when you get married. Ciao. You can really get comfortable because at this point, I've, I've landed the man. I've got the man of my dreams. I'm at home. It started off with cute little two pieces. Then it went to track suits. Then it went to mix matching. Then it went to looking a hot mess sometimes. So it's definitely, I've kind of pulled myself up and kind of been a little bit aware of, 
know, sometimes you can be looking a bit of a hot mess at home and you still gotta keep it cute. You have to keep it classy. You have to find time to look after yourself, not just for your man, but for yourself as well. So I've definitely seen how very quickly it is to kind of get comfortable. I think, again, not to make this whole video about COVID, but COVID definitely played a part in that for me anyways, in my marriage, because we were at home 24 seven. So I worked at home, I ate at home, I slept at home. Everything we did was at home. So I think it's always important to make sure that you keep it fresh and it doesn't have to be expensive. I did a favorites video a while back on like my favorite PJ sets are from Primark and they're literally like under 20 pounds, under 25 pounds and they're just the most cute kind of like satin top and bottoms and it's just something nice to wear around the house where you can still kind of look put together um, just for no reason or every now and again I'll just kind of spruce myself up and I'll notice he'll be like oh you look nice today and in my head I'm like <laughs> yeah and it's not because i'm going anywhere it's just because i want to kind of present myself in a way that's still beautiful when i'm at home that doesn't mean makeup that doesn't mean expensive clothes or anything like that it can be really simple but it's just kind of sprucing yourself together and making sure that you're not too comfortable so the next thing i want to talk about is dating you have to keep dating so quickly you can just get bogged down with like the day to day okay we get up we work we go to the gym we go grocery shopping we go to church we come back we have dinner we go and then you before you realize you you've seen each other 24 7 but you haven't actually like seen each other you haven't really spent time with each other you haven't sat down and really talked or dated so we kind of pulled ourselves up on it and we realized that we haven't really been dating each other so we've now gone back to making a list of restaurants that we want to go to making a list of like date night spots that we want to go to or just making like more of an effort at home to sit down phones away and find a show that we can watch or find a series that we can watch recently it's been squid games so it's just to find kind of something that you can do to keep the spark to make sure that you're still dating that it's still fun the same way that we used to kind of date prior to getting married we had like a whole list of things that we would say that we wanted to go do whether that was an outdoor cinema whether that was and they were things that were really expensive and things that were really cheap it could be a picnic in the park but we used to make like a real effort before we got married to date each other because we didn't live with each other so that was kind of our only opportunity to kind of spend time with one another but I think once we got married and kind of as the years went on we got a little bit reluctant so this year we were like okay we're not dating each other we need to make sure that we make this a priority so I would definitely say to make dating a priority and again it doesn't mean spending a lot of money but it's just finding time where you guys have kind of set time just for yourselves phones away distractions away just for you guys to connect one-on-one -on -one. so people always say communication is key i've said communication is key i'm pretty sure i've spoken about communication in previous videos that i've done however i don't think a lot of people speak about how to develop or how to get an understanding of how you guys communicate best or what styles of communication work for you as much as you can get a lot of advice from books from ted talks and all of that kind of stuff there isn't necessarily like a one rule or a one way of communication that works for absolutely everybody to give you an example if you are having some of a disagreement I would assume that the majority of people would say it would be better to speak about it face to face as opposed to texting that might not work for everybody sometimes it might be that if you just text you're able to just kind of clearly think through your thoughts I remember there was a time where we didn't necessarily have an agree a disagreement but there was something that we had to discuss and we went back and forth via text and afterwards we spoke to each other and we were just like that went very smoothly and we dealt with the situation very quickly and perhaps had we had a phone conversation we might not have necessarily had an argument but it might have been a lot more of a longer discussion because you're constantly going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth so I think it's really important to kind of find out what works best for each other because 
Your husband might have a specific way that he prefers to be communicated with or a specific way of communication that doesn't work for him and vice versa. So I think, yes, communication is key, but I think in the three years that we've been together, I feel like we've now learned each other and we've learned how the other person likes to be communicated with and how they don't like to be communicated with. So I think it's kind of nicer to kind of, like communication is here, but let's like dig a little bit deeper and actually figure out what types of communication work best for us where do we like to communicate so for example do you find communicating in person face to face quite intense do you prefer to communicate where you're talking over dinner so that way you're not like staring at each other like what do you think about this what do you think about that so it's the little thing so I would say that's definitely something that I have learned and something that we've built is really kind of nailing down how we like to communicate with one another Talk about having an aha moment. Something that came up in this third year of my marriage was the phrase, I'm sorry. Such a simple phrase, but oh, how complex it can be. So something that I came across this year was the love languages of apology. Please go and read this book. I cannot stress to you enough how much of an eye opener it was for me. Um, I've done a whole video on this on Instagram. So go ahead over there if you want to learn more about love languages of apology in detail. But essentially the same way that you have the five love languages of you know words of affirmation, gifts, etc. This is basically the same concept by the same man, Gary Chapman, on basically the ways in which we like to receive an apology. So my sweet dear husband, we might get into the tiniest of disagreements. And what would be a simple, I'm sorry, babe, and kind of move on, I would always kind of feel like something was just, something was just kind of missing for me. And I realized that it was more so the acknowledgement that I needed whoever it was, whether it's a friend, whether it's my husband, to acknowledge that my actions, whether it was intentional, whether it was unintentional, it had an effect on how I was feeling or it had an effect on my emotions or it had an effect on my day, whatever that was just to acknowledge that. And so I think we would get into situations where maybe my husband would be like, I'm sorry. And I would be like, and the rest of the sentence is. But a lot of the times that's all we're taught. We're taught just apologize, just say sorry. But I think sometimes it's interesting to kind of learn just as human beings, just kind of how we're wired that sometimes people need something different. So in the love languages of apology, it goes on to speak about the fact that some people need acknowledgement of guilt. So they need you to actually say, you know, I'm sorry for doing X, Y, and Z. Other people need acknowledgement, me, which is more like, I'm sorry that because I, did X, Y, and Z, it really messed up your morning. Um, and there's various different other ones, but I think again, I'm somebody that really enjoys learning about kind of like the human psychology or how we behave as human beings. Because I think the more you do understand that, the more it helps you in your marriage, in relationships, in just how you, and relationships being romantic and platonic, how you are with your parents, how you are with your friendship groups. I think it just kind of enables you to understand how to communicate better with certain people. And also again, going back to my point about communication, knowing that you can't communicate the same way with absolutely everyone and expect it will work. People are wired differently, so you kind of have to be nimble and kind of communicate with people in that different way. So, I'm sorry is a very simple phrase, but I promise you there is a lot more to it. So I will leave a link for the book in the description box. So if you are interested, I would highly recommend for you guys to go and read it. So the next thing I wanna talk about is how much marriage will stretch you. Now, I think I learned this in year one and in year two, but in year three, it's kind of become more prevalent that marriage really is like a mirror. It will show you all the things that are great about you and it will show you all of the ugly truths as well. It's, it's like being in the gym every single day. You're having to practice, you know, selflessness. You're having to practice sacrifice. You're having to practice submission. You're having to practice 
all of these traits and all of these characteristics that build you into being a better person, not just a better wife or a better husband, just a better person, period. Um, so I think it's been really interesting, just again, just kind of going on this journey of marriage and just seeing how much it has stretched me, how much it has helped me to grow, how much it has helped me to be more, um, less selfish rather. Um, and just to be more caring, to be more loving, to be more kind, to be more patient, to be more of all of the things that you would want in the ideal partner, as opposed to being more concerned with, oh, my husband should be doing this for me and he should be more this. It's more so about yourself. It's like, no, I need to be more of this for my husband. And then my husband does the same thing. I need to be more of this for her. So it's, it's really almost like the best tool for like self-improvement and working on yourself. So I think that's something that has been very interesting just to kind of see as time has gone on, just how you're constantly put in situations where you are just refining your characteristics and just constantly, if you choose to, just constantly tuning yourself into just a better version of yourself every single day. So the next point, check in with your partner and do not assume. Now, three years into marriage, you would think, I, I know my husband pretty well and vice versa. He knows me down to a T. However, I cannot read his mind. Haven't learned how to do that yet. He also cannot read my mind. So something that we've had to make like an active effort to do is to check in with one another. Um, that could be from the smallest thing to the biggest thing. Checking in with each other about finances. Are you happy with the way in which we're managing them? Are you happy with how much is coming in and how much is going out? Are you happy with... I can't think of anything, but just just everything. Are you happy with how much we're, we're dating each other? Do you feel like we should be doing more? Or even just being vulnerable enough to ask the person, what is something that I'm doing right now that you would like more of? What is something that I'm doing right now that you feel like I need to do less of or something that I'm doing that you don't quite like or that you would like for me to improve on or work on? I think, you know, you have to have those honest and open conversations. You can't just be in your corner, just constantly frustrated that, oh, my partner does this and oh, my partner does this. You have to actually verbalize it. You have to speak to them. You have to check in because if not, it, you you just get so used to just being with the person. And yeah, it's fun, it's happy. I love being married. I wouldn't change it for the world. I love my husband to bits. However, you can get used to just the normal routine of just the 24 hours just keep rolling on and on and on. And then before you realize there's something that you would actually like a little bit more of your partner from in a specific area. Like I'll go back to dating, for example, instead of me just being in a corner like, oh, my husband doesn't, he doesn't take me out on dates, etc. It's finding time to have little check-ins where it's like, okay, what would you like more of me? Okay, actually, babe, what I would really like is I would like for you to make more of an effort and take me out on some dates done deal. Then if the person doesn't do it, then you can pull them up on it. But it's almost like you can't be angry at somebody or upset with somebody for not meeting an expectation that you never, uh, you never express to them. So it's important to not assume express. Don't assume that your partner is 100% happy with absolutely everything. Find out, find out if there's things that they're not happy with or find out if there are things there that they are happy with so that it gives them an opportunity to let you know. So you know you're doing a good job in that area and that you can keep on going. So do not assume, check in, use your mouth, talk to your partner. So the next point that I want to talk about is being a student of marriage. So there is no university of marriage where you go, you get your degree and now you are just, you know everything on the topic, you've got an A star, you are ready to now go into this journey. Three years in, I am still learning stuff. Five years in, I will still be learning things. 25 years in, I will still be learning things. However, one thing that um, I can kind of pride myself on is I really enjoy learning. I really enjoy reading books, whether it's things like Love Languages, Love Languages of Apology, whether it's other books on marriage by some incredible authors that are out there, whether it's reading the Bible and looking at scriptures that specifically speak on marriage, or whether it's watching TED Talks or 
you know, listening to my pastor talk about marriage or just, just being a sponge and just really learning from people that are out there that have gone ahead of me and have got incredible things to share about marriage. I think you cannot assume that you kind of know it all. If you think about with anything, with your health and fitness, we invest, we eat right, we go to the gym. With a new course, we'll go online, we'll study, etc. With any area of your life, if you want to grow, you have to work at it. And I think it's the same thing with marriage. It's not that marriage is hard and marriage is this. No, but like everything, marriage is work. Um, there is nothing in life that comes easy without working for it in any area of life. And the same thing goes for marriage. So I would really just kind of encourage anyone at whatever stage you are, whether you are further than me in marriage or whether you are um, a newlywed, just learn, just, just be a sponge and just be open to being able to learning from the knowledge and the wisdom that people ahead of you have to offer. So for my last point for the 10 things that I've learned in my three years of marriage, this is something that I think it's fair to say that I knew early on, but again, like most things, as the years have gone on, it's something that has been more and more true, which is marriage is more than just about love. I think in the society and the world that we live in, marriage and relationships is very much like romanticized and it's about the roses and the petals and the chocolates and the champagne and the date nights and all of the glitz and the glam. As much as me and my husband, I would like to think we are very lovey-dovey and we are very affectionate towards each other. Sometimes it's just, hey, you good? Yeah, or bye. Like it's not always like all smooches and kisses and all of this kind of stuff. So it's more than just it's more than just love. It's waking up every day and wanting to be an amazing wife for my husband and vice versa. It's waking up every day and trying to find the small little ways in which I can help his life be better and vice versa. Finding ways in which I can push him further into his destiny and vice versa. It's more than just the lovey-dovey stuff. It's, it's the most beautiful partnership and the most beautiful, um, union that you can think of to have somebody as a life partner it takes work in the sense where it's not just about the fun times so i think it's really important to really look at what you feel like your role is in your partner's life and vice versa or what you think your purpose is together as a union and really working towards that it's more than just the the romantic side of it marriage is a beautiful union and there's a purpose behind every single person's marriage and there's a purpose that each of us have as individuals and so it's amazing to be able to be in this partnership where you have somebody who is dedicated to making sure that you live your absolute potential and that you hit your absolute destiny and vice versa so that's something that i think has definitely become more and more evident as i've gone in that the love is great the love is there yes absolutely but that is not the that that is not the be all and end all of marriage. So we've come to the end of the 10 things that I have learned in my three years of marriage. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video and you've gained a little bit of insight into some of the things that I've learned over the years. If you have enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button and leave me a comment as well so that I know maybe what part or what was your favorite point out of the 10 things that I mentioned. Also, make sure to hit that subscribe button and make sure to hit that notification bell so that you do not miss another upload from me. What are you waiting for? Hit it. I'll wait. Hit the subscribe button. Anyways, until next time. Bye.